When somebody says home assistant to you, the first thing that probably pops on your mind is either smart home or home automation. Graphs are definitely not something that you will think of at first. But there is a way to add very nice graphs even to home assistant. Today we will be looking at a couple of them. If you have smart home, you probably have a lot of devices, sensors, that provide data or input data into Home Assistant, and we use data to make automations or to make our house or home smarter. With that data also comes the power to analyze data and to visually represent it on your screen via the graphs and charts. Unfortunately, embedded charts and graphs in the Home Assistant are not that pretty. We have two of them. One of them is history graph and the other one is statistics graph. As it says, history graphs allow you to chart the history, while the statistic one can be used to show the minimum, maximum, median values for one specific sensor and then represent that values across a longer period of time, such as in this case for over one month. So one of the first things that I installed in my home assistant, even before HACS ever existed, was of course Mini Graph Card. Mini Graph Card, as the name says, allows you to create minimalistic custom graphics on your home assistant UI. What was previously not that pretty historical graph now looks much cleaner and nicer. The way to install the Mini Graph Card is press on plus explore and download repositories. Type in Mini, select Mini Graphic Card, download. I myself prefer to always download the release versions, so I will not be tick show beta versions and click on download. Since this is not integration, it's a Lovelace or UI component, we do not have to reload Home Assistant, but we do have to reload the page so that browser cache can be cleared. Press on reload. By the way, if you want to check if everything is installed for any of the Lovelace or UI cards in a Home Assistant HACS, just go to the Settings, Dashboards, click on three dots and click on Resources. Here you will see the list of all of the modules that you've installed. Most of them will probably be through the HACS. And here you should be able to find the mini graph card, which is here. Since I want to keep this video short, let's say a bit shorter than few hours, I will not be going into details of the various graph cards. But we will create at least one card for each of the graph types that you can add to Home Assistant. Let's go to this Graphs tab. Here we already have Balcony Humidity added through the Historical and Statistical card. But now let's press on Edit Dashboard, Add Card. Click on Custom Mini Graph Card, and since this component doesn't have Visual Editor, you will have to type your YAML code here. The easiest way to get acquainted with all of those cards that we will be looking at today is to go to the GitHub repository. And by the way, the links to all the cards that I will be showing you here will also be included in the description of the video down below. Each of those cards should have installation procedure, how to add resource if it's missing but we already checked and it's there, and how to use the card. When I start with a new UI component, I usually go through the examples. I copy the code, change the sensor name to the sensor I want to show, and then later on work through the other examples, and finally the code and the options that this card allows me to do. Let's see how this example works with our sensor in Home Assistant. In UI Editor, just paste the code, rename the sensor to match the sensor that you have in your instance. For me, this will be Balcony humidity and let's press save. So now we have three examples, history, statistics and our first graph here. If we look at my main setup and this is my main live working home setup, you will see that I have a lot of mini graph cards. And some of those graphs are really complex, such as this one here, where I represent the power consumption in my apartment and I also show the difference between the night and day. But what if you want to make more advanced, a bit different or something special in terms of graphs and charts? Well, let's look at the second example. Let's go to HACS, 
frontend and type here Apex for Apex Charts cards. While the mini graph card was really minimalistic graph card and it would really be enough for most of our uses. If you need something more advanced, more prettier and you need to correlate some other data and show it in the graph, this one may be for you. So let's download it, reload the page and go to our examples. If you click on add card, type Apex, this time you will have example, but still there will be no UI editor. Custom Apex chart card, header show true, title is Apex charts card. Let me remove that and type here humidity. And instead of this sensor USGS alert, and by the way, this sensor was pulled from my system, we will type balcony and select once again humidity. And instead of this Nuki bridge port, let's remove it. Let's, for example, select some other humidity sensor, such as Loja humidity. And here is our first working example. After you have removed the sample code that is generating whatever, this is the real data from my system. We can see visually now difference between the Loja and balcony humidity, one is represented via the graph or line, the other one is bar chart. As always, I really do recommend that after you install it, even maybe before you add the first Apex chart to your Home Assistant, that you go and read the documentation. If everything is a bit too much for you, you can go through the examples. For example, this one is displaying the indoor temperature, but it also had header action, and this one is to call the heater climate turn on. While the line chart is something that Minigraph does nicely, this one has a lot more options. You have radial bar, pie, donut, line and scatter. And with that you can create multiple of very different sensors and visualize your data. Some of the functionality in the Apex card is still experimental. For example, this brush. This is an experimental feature. What it allows you is it allows you to select just part of the graph. For example, out of this longer chart or graph with the data, you can just select part of it and display that part in a big graph. And as always, go through the examples from simple graphs, aggregating data, using card with auto entities, etc. Still not enough. We already have two Home Assistant internal types of graphs and also two HACS components. You want more? Okay, let's go to the HACS frontend, select on explore and type plotty. Mini for minimalistic, Apex for very complex and plotty for dynamic. If you want to have dynamic charts and graphs inside your home assistant, then you should install plotty graph card. Press on download, click on download and click on reload. If we go to overview, our test page, press three dots, edit dashboard, plus type plotty. We now have the UI editor. We can type here pressure, hours to show 96, refresh interval 10, and once again, balcony humidity, save. We now have graph of balcony humidity. So what is the difference between this, which doesn't look maybe that good, and this one here? What we can do here is we can scroll in, scroll out, magnify, use our mouse wheel and drag and drop to go into more detail of this specific graph. We also can use the buttons to zoom in, zoom out, auto scale, zoom and pan. But Plotty is also much more than that, and in order for you to get most out of it, you should definitely go to GitHub and read up on the documentation. If you do not want to use Visual Configuration Editor, which is available for basic configurations, you can copy the code. But for more advanced graphs, you should be using YAML Editor. For example, if we select this here, copy it and paste it in our system, of course, we have to change the sensor names. 
we now have the ability to correlate the humidity with the temperature. As you can see on this graph, when humidity is high, the temperature is lower. When the temperature goes up, the humidity goes down. But this is just a simple showcase of what you can do with this card. And as I said, you can also select the snippet and then zoom in into this particular part of the graph and see more detailed information or detailed graphs, bars, charts inside your home assistant. But of course, this was example that I just copied and pasted from this page. If you want to see more, read up on the documentation on the GitHub repository, but don't forget that you also have a link here in the more YAML examples, click on show and tell and see examples of what other people did. So you still want more graphs. There is actually one that is really interesting and this one I will be installing in my main setup because I think that I have enough data for that one there. Let's go to HACS, frontend, click on explore and download repositories and type sun key chart. Sun key chart is great, for example, for power usage, power production or similar stuff where you have nested device that creates some combined value. For example, when I said electricity, if we look at my home, I have Shelly EM that is measuring the total power consumption. And what I can do is I can then correlate, for example, the washing machine, dishwasher, my 3D printer, lights in the house, and show in a percentage of how much of that power is from those devices, or how many of those devices are using how many power in the graph. So let's install this one. Once again, click on download, download, reload, and Sunkey chart card has been installed. I don't know if you have noticed or not, but all the documentation that we looked so far, I opened in a separate browser. Sometimes, unfortunately, documentation from the GitHub repository is not properly displayed inside Home Assistant. And I suggest that you click on three dots, click on repository, and look at the repository directly from your web browser. As always, I will start with the example from the repository. Let's copy the code, go to my energy tab, click on three dots, select Sunkey chart, and I've pasted here the code that we copied from the repository. I have to replace this with Shelly EM Energy. And then let's replace this with the Lights PM Energy and Living Energy. Let's copy those two sensors here. And I've fixed the formatting and let's press on Save. What this graph allows me is to show me what is the percentage of one specific sensor. For example, I've used here 12,000 kilowatt hours, which is this value here. And out of those 12,000 kilowatt hours, 6 kilowatt hours are for the dining room lights. 2.9 kilowatts is uh, living room lights. Of course, the example that I created was a very simple one. So if you want to create more complex graphs, just go to the documentation. But there is one last component I want to show you. Once again, let's go to HACS, Frontend, Explore, and type Horseshoe. Flexible Horseshoe card for Lovelace. While this is not a typical graph card, maybe this one may be useful for you. It is very similar to the simple thermostat card, but you can use it to represent any values that you want to have in your home assistant. Let's click on download, reload, and we now have flexible horseshoe card installed. Let's go to overview, test environment, press on add card, and if we try to type horseshoe, there is no option to use this card via the UI. What you will have to do is press on manual, go through repository, and I really do recommend that you go through it. This card is very simple, but it's also very powerful for customization. Let me find the example code and paste it here. If you paste it and see this no card type found and you have minus space then type, what you unfortunately have to do is reformat this because it looks like the GitHub repository didn't have the formatting style that it really should have. Let me quickly do that. 
Of course, you have to change other values too. Because I'm not using temperature sensor, there are some additional parts of the sensor that you have to customize depending on your wishes. I've changed attribute to pressure, that's means either you can leave at 1 or make it 0. Unit is percentage and more or less this is it. I also changed the horseshoe scale from uh, it was minus 10 to maximum 40 degrees because it was previously degrees. Since this is now pressure, it minimum value is 950 and the maximum value is 1050. And I also played with the color stops. 950 is red, 1000 is blue and 1020 is yellow. Sure, this is a simple example and of course you can do much more with it. I did include it in this video because at the end it is a bit of a visual representation of the data and it all depends on what you want to do and what you want to show to your users or to yourself through the Home Assistant UI. You can use internal graphs, you can use more complex graphs, but also you can combine the graphs with the states of the sensors and play with that too. While I do have to agree with the great Scott that if you are using Home Assistant without the HACS, there are not that many great options to visualize your data. HACS does change that and it really brings the power of data visualization. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting. And if you did find it interesting, don't forget to give me a like. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank all of those people who are supporting me on the YouTube and have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But also thank you for watching, liking or subscribing to my channel. If you too want to support this channel, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member. Thank you. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.